God. And, uh, I celebrate God because of this day. Hallelujah. Uh, depending on where you are, I believe that, you know, uh, the Lord has been faithful in your life. I believe that God has kept you. I believe that uh, those that had uh, the Sunday service, you know, uh, depending on where you are, I believe that God gave you a wonderful Sunday service. And I believe that, you know, you were able to worship him in truth and in spirit. And uh, <clears throat> those that are, you know, having services right now, I believe that God is also blessing your life. And so I take this opportunity to really appreciate God for you. Those that are joining, those that will be joining later, those that will be listening to these uh, uh, wonderful online service later on YouTube. I pray that God will uh, speak to you and God will, uh, you know, uh, reach out to your life and uh, change something in the spiritual realm in your life. And so I want to appreciate God for that. And uh, today is a special day for all the fathers. And I want to uh, take this uh, wonderful opportunity, first of all, to appreciate God as our Heavenly Father. And I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate all the you know, fathers, you know, all the fathers in faith. May the Lord bless you. May the Almighty God bless you and uh, do good. I have, you know, great men of God that uh, have worked with me, you know, through it all, all the seasons. And I really want to celebrate God for their lives. I really want to appreciate God for their lives. Uh, I, I can mention a lot, uh, many, many, many uh, generals that have worked with me, but I want to appreciate God. You know, I may not mention names. I may not mention your name, but I want you to know that, uh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is doing something uh, unique in your life. And I want you to know that it's always a blessing to, you know, to, 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 to know that you are a great father. So <clears throat> I join all the, you know, all, I join everyone as today we all know it was an international day for the Father's Day. And so I want to say happy Father's Day. This might be a bit late, but uh depending on where you are, I want to say happy Father's Day to all that are joining. And at this point, I want to celebrate the grace of God upon my spiritual father, who uh, has been a blessing to me and to my family just standing with me. May the Almighty God bless you, uh, uh, spiritual father, all the way from Puerto Rico. May the Almighty God bless you and do you good. I celebrate you, the prophet of God, uh, Papa Ricardo Morales. All, may the Almighty God do you good and so without much ado i want to share this uh i want to share this uh uh this wonderful uh, wonderful wonderful uh, powerful words that god has laid in my spirit uh to each one of us and uh i believe that god is going to speak to you in the, in the next few minutes i pray that the holy ghost will come upon you and you'll be able to you know get something out of these teachings tonight in Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. But before we get into that, I want to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you and I bless your name today. I give you glory and I give you honor. Thank you for this wonderful day that you've given unto us, Father, as we celebrate the fathers today. I pray, Father God Almighty, give us the revelation, give us the understanding. Lord, as I bring this message, oh God, this is a it is a special day that, Lord, you've allowed me to come over and share Lord, your word and share your truth, O oh God, Lord, for to our lives today. And so, Father, I disappear that may appear. Pray, Father, less of me and more of you in my life. I bless and I give you glory. Thank you for all my sons and daughters. I pray for them right now. And I speak, Lord, your blessing, O oh Father, over their lives for the glory and turn of your name. I give you glory and I give you praise for your plans and for all that you're going to do today. Thank you for all that are connected, Father, those that are in Kenya, those that are in you know, different kind, different nations. I pray for them right now. Holy Spirit of God, may you minister to each one of us and all the glory shall come back unto you. We thank you and that we bless your holy name today for it is in the majestic name of Jesus. We pray and we believe. If you're right there, you're following on Facebook, you can just shout amen with me and uh, you know, make this be a wonderful place to be and uh, let the Lord speak to you. Glory to God. 
And so um, it's a privilege to be here. I can see, uh, I can see, uh, I can see that there's some people already who join on Facebook. Uh, Mama, all the way from Denmark. God bless you for joining, Mama. I celebrate you. You, you know, I'm your son. At the same time, you know, you are my daughter. And so I celebrate God for this grace. And thank you for joining. May the Almighty God bless you and do you good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God, all that are joining. Uh, George Gitonga Kuria, God bless you for joining. As you come in, please, as you come in, uh, let me know where you are connecting from. This gives me uh, uh, proper proper clarity of just knowing where you are connecting from. And if there is anything that you really need the man of God to pray with you, it is always a blessing that I will stand together with you in prayer in Jesus' name. I have already prayed, and I want us to go straight to the word of God. And uh, the topic of today is, uh, oh, glory to God, I'm in destiny. God bless you. Such a blessing. May the Almighty God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being part of this program. I celebrate you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, Ephesians chapter number three, Ephesians chapter number three, verse number 14. I'll read, then I'll continue from right there. The Bible says, for this reason, I bow, I bow my knees to the Father. Mm, love that. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the, in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you may, that you be rooted, that you be being rooted and grounded in love, that be rooted and be grounded in love. May the Almighty God bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Like I said, uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to send your question. Feel free to, uh, you know, to share with your friends. And that will be a great blessing. Glory to God. Now, I want to share on fatherhood. 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 And today is a special day that we are celebrating all the fathers, fatherhood. Now, the prayer of Apostle Paul written in uh, Ephesians, you know, Ephesians chapter number three, verse number 14, going all the way to verse number 15, it says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the father. Look at that. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So we have a Father in heaven that our names, you know, our names are named after that Father. And that is our God in heaven. We have a Father in heaven and our names are named after that father in heaven. Glory to God. What a privilege and honor to know that you have a father in heaven. Glory to God. Now, the point to ponder is that any concept of fatherhood has its origin in God. When we talk about the fatherhood, it has its origin in God. Fatherhood has a concept of its origin in God. Why? Because our God is our, our Father. God Almighty is our Father. That's why the Bible says, and Paul says, For I bow my knees, glory to God, for I bow my knees. Hallelujah. I bow for this reason. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So I want you to know, child of God, 
that you have been named after the name of the Lord God Almighty. To understand God's concept of fatherhood, glory to God, to understand God's concept of fatherhood, we must understand, glory to God, we must understand that, you know, there is a meaning of that fatherhood itself. When we celebrate the, the Father's Day today, someone needs to understand that, you know, what does it mean to be a father? And uh, what is the meaning of this when we talk about fatherhood? Or when we celebrate a Father's Day, what does it mean? Glory to God. Now, to understand this, it is important, my brother and my sister and all my viewers, to understand that to be a father, it means that you are, according to the biblical way, you are the head. Fathers are the head. And from the biblical point of view, the head should, should not be a burden that it carries, that it is carrying the neck. The head should not be a burden that it is carrying the neck. That's why fathers are the head of the family. And Jesus said, just as, you know, you know, the Bible says, just as Christ, Jesus himself, is the head of the church. And so husbands, or rather fathers, are the head of the family. Glory to God. The head should not say, the neck is giving me a body. No. The head means, when, when, you know, when I talk about the head, I want somebody to understand that the head means you are the source. The head means you are in a place of supply. The head means you are carrying protection. The head means wisdom. The head means priesthood and blessings to the family. These are the things that we all need to understand as we celebrate the Father's Day today because a father is the source of the family. A father is the supply of the family. A father protects the family. A father gives wisdom to the family. A father is the priest to the family. A father speaks the priesthood blessing to the family. Not just a priest, but a father speaks spiritual blessing to the family. Priesthood blessing to the family. Glory to God. Now, let me just break little by little, father as a protection of the family. When you talk a father, when you talk of a father as a protection of the family, a father is a protector of the family. Get this, my viewer, a father is a protector of the family. Jesus said, God, the father was with him. Look, look at that. Jesus said, God, the Father, was with him. Glory to God. Now, the head stands for protection and safety. When you have a father, celebrate your father because your father protects you. This can be your biological father. This can be your spiritual father. Your father protects you. Your father speaks protection. Your father leads you in the ways of safety. Glory to God. The head of the family determines the boundaries. The head of the family determines, determines your boundaries. Glory to God. And so you can see the work of, uh, of, of a father in your life. You can see what a father does in your life. Now, God wants 
to bring the family to the atmosphere that is safety. He, as our father, he wants to bring the family to the atmosphere that is safety. Now, I say that the head of the family determines the boundaries. Now, listen, a father explains the boundaries by saying we have such and such rules, a clear communication of boundaries is done by the father. I am a father too. And one thing I have learned is that I have to set a clear rules in my own family. I have to set a clear communication of boundaries in my own family, in my own generation, because this cannot be done by somebody else. If I allow it to be done by somebody else, if you allow it to be done by somebody else, my brother and my sister, you know, my brother right there, you know, they, we also have sisters that are managing the whole situation because they, they don't have, you know, the, the husbands with them. They don't have people that, you know, they can uh, relax to and say, connect to, uh, to the kids. And they, we have sisters that are very good and taking care of the children. But I am specifically, because today is the Father's Day, I am specifically talking about fathers and your responsibility. It is the responsibility of the father to, 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 to set rules, to have a clear communication of boundaries, because this is the something that needs to be done by the father. And I have witnessed that, you know, when I am not at home, when I'm not at home, the family is okay, yes. But the truth of the matter is, they are not okay. And when dad is at home, you know, everyone in the family knows that there is nothing that we can fear. Why? Because a father protects. You know, when a father is at home, when a dad is at home, everyone knows that there is nothing, we have no, nothing to fear about. Even if people come to knock the door and they want to threaten, they want to do anything they want to do, you know, the entire family knows that we have one thing that we know, that our father, who is our protector, is here to protect our lives. So I want somebody to know that being a father, it is not just a name. Being a father is not just a title. Being celebrated as a father, one day I say it, and I'll say it again, just being able to put on a trouser does not mean that you qualify to be a father. Oh, glory to God. You, you, you don't qualify to be a father by putting on a trouser, by putting on a jacket, does not make you to be a father. Glory to God. And so father, fatherhood is responsibility. You have to protect. You have to know that you know the family is looking at you. You have to really make sure that you are pro you are protecting. Now, listen. A father being the head is translated as a source. Like I said, is translated as the source. A source gives provision. He who provides, you know, a father is somebody that provides for the family, not just, not, just, uh, uh, not just protecting, but also a father provides. If you are a father, you need to understand that the, 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 the family, this can be, like I said, biological father, this can be spiritual father. They have to provide for, you know, a father provides spiritual matters, they provide for you. They provide the wisdom. They provide that, you know, they provide the, the wisdom, the spirit of food, the word of God to your life, to your spirit. That is a father. They provide what you need. Glory to God. A father sees the need. And when a father sees the need, <clears throat> he doesn't need to be told by any other person that this is what you need to do. Because a father is a provider. They, he will provide. He sees the need. Because, you know, that's why the Bible says, 
that you know we have a father who in heaven our god is able to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory glory to god and so i want somebody to know that a father being the head means you are the source of the family you are the source in that you know in the in your generation you are not just there you are not just there to waste time you're not just there to warm benches you're not just there to you know to put on a trouser not every man is a father let me say that again not every man is a father because if you are a man, you have you have a wonderful family, and you are not able to step in and and look for solution and make sure that your family is uh, is 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 you know they are looking at you. If you don't make that difference, I am telling the truth, brutal truth about it is that there is a problem. And so we are learning on fatherhood. Those that are joining on Facebook. Don't, don't get scared. We are learning on father because this is a special day for fathers. A father provides. They meet the needs. Glory to God. Now, a father provides, a father provides not only for the needs of the family, but also wisdom. Like I said, a father provides not only for the uniform, not only for the books, not only for the food in the family, but a father also provides wisdom to the family. A father provides advice to the family. Glory to God. A father provides an, env an, uh, an environment that is friendly. We are living in the days whereby fathers don't spend time with their children. Fathers don't spend time with their children. And I want to believe that God is calling us to a place of, uh, you know, coming back to, you know, the origin, coming back to the origin, because even God, our Father, he wants to spend more time with us, because we have been called by his name. And so God is calling us as fathers, glory to God, to a place of uh, giving, pro giving the provision of wisdom the provision of advice, the provision of friendship, not, you know, there are fathers who cannot, you know, they don't have time with their kids. And so when your, your child wants something from you, it is like a protocol because they don't know when, they don't know what will happen when they tell you something. Now, my brother, I am asking by the grace of God, if you're in that category, Create time with your children, create time with your family, and you know, be able, be able to give fatherhood because it is a greater blessing from the Lord when you do the right thing. Now, father provides friendship, father provides discernment. You must be able to discern discernment of situation. A father provides discernment. If you are a father and you are not having the spirit of discernment in you, there is, there is a big problem. It is an error that you are not able to provide discernment in your, in your family. A father will discern. Their, 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 their fathers, their fathers, you are listening to this broadcast today. You are joining this service today. Their fathers, you know, the, the good thing with an apostle is that the grace of God is sufficient and whatever the Lord lies in my heart to speak out, I have to help somebody out there. There are fathers who can't tell, there are fathers who can't even, they don't know when their children are sick. Glory to God. There's, there is a father that, you know, because you don't have time with the children, you don't have time with your sons, you don't have time with your daughters, you really don't know when they're sick, when they're okay, you have no idea, and listen to me, it becomes a burden, it becomes something out of place that you can't, you know, you take the children, you take, you know, until your child, your son and daughter get so bad, that's when you start running the last minute, and like for, for two weeks, he or she has been sick, but you didn't know about. Now, listen, a good father will always be, will always provide discernment of situation. Not only that, but a good father will have motivation, will provide motivation and all good things. A good father will provide motivation and all good things. 
motivate your family, motivate your sons and daughters, even in the spiritual realm. Motivate your sons and daughters, my, you know, my fellow father, my fellow man. Motivate your son and daughters in their giftings. Motivate their life in their in their talents. Motivate their life in everything that they are doing. Motivate them in the school. Motivate your children to do good in school. Motivate them, even if you are a father and you never. You, you are not performing very well in school. Don't say, oh no, because I never, I never achieved anything in school. Now there is nothing good that will come out of my family. Now listen, be a motivator. A good father is a motivator. Motivate your children, even if they were number last last time, even if they are not, they are not doing very good. Motivate them because that is why you are celebrated today. That is why you will not just be celebrated today and it ends there. We, if you want to be celebrated, motivate, pro provide, give a provision for motivation, give a provision in all things, motivate your generation. <clears throat> motivate them. If somebody, if your son and daughter cannot pray for two hours and you can pray for five hours, motivate them to pray for 15 minutes. Motivate them to pray for 30 minutes. Don't say now you are so dry, you, 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 you are not connected to the spirit of God. No, motivate them. If they're reading the word of God, they don't understand anything. Sit down with them. Let them understand the word of God. If you want them to grow well in the word of God, you want them to grow well in the business, you want them to grow well in the vision, you want them to grow well, motivate them, motivate them. Motivation is the key. And you cannot get this motivation from the wrong source. You only get this from your father. And to all my sons and daughters right now, receive the spirit of motivation. I motivate you right now as your father to go for what you you know it is good for you. Your father will come and tell you, go and get it. I'm talking to sons and daughters that will say, I want to be a go-getter. I want to go and get it right. I want to fix it because I have the motivation. I want to be among the people that will uh, you know, appear into the good books because I have received a motivation from my father. I believe that I'm talking to somebody right now. Glory to God. Now, fathers who rarely are the source, fathers who are not, who rarely are the source, think about providing for their close ones. Now, fathers who rarely are the source, there are those people who are just rarely, or really, okay, fathers who are really are the source, they think about providing for their close ones. If you are a father, a true father, a real father, a true father, you know, you have the marks of fatherhood in you. You have the marks of fatherhood in you. And you know that you're the source. You think about providing for the people that are closer to you. That is your family. That is your family. The Bible says, by the way, oh, glory to God. The Bible says that if, you know, a father that is not providing for his own immediate family. It is, he's equal to a wicked man. It's equal to a witch man. Fathers, as you celebrate this day, I pray that you will not be called a wicked man because if you don't provide for your immediate family, and this does not mean that you bring your family to to a classified environment. I know economy is hard. I know people are really struggling. I know that things are hard, but I'm saying that even if you have to, you know, you have to uh, take uh, water together, let your family know that you're taking the water together and the Lord is providing, the Lord is making a way. You don't run away. I'm talking to fathers that I know for sure there are those that even decided to run away from home because economy is bad, because things are not working the, the, you know, the way they expected them to work. And as I'm talking to you, I am not perfect, glory to God, but we work towards perfection. If, if, you know, if the Lord has given you that, of, uh, you know, that responsibility, you have to take your place. 
and make sure that the that the you know the the the, the people the family that God has given you talk about cloth talk about shelter talk about all these things it is a responsibility as a father to make sure that you have given the provision a good father does not think selfishly of himself or their own self realization goals a good father does not think selfishly when you become a good father to be celebrated you cannot be celebrated if you're selfish you cannot be celebrated if you are just thinking about yourself if you you cannot be celebrated if you have self realization goals it is just me and me and me and me and me you you, you know, if you're just a father that thinks of it's just me if ju it's just me i have learned in this walk of faith and i've learned that sometimes as a father glory to god sometimes as a father you have to go extra mile you may you may you may really want something in your life but because you know you care a father is a caretaker a father takes care of the family glory to god and so you don't become selfish you don't just go and get something out there and you 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 pond alive and you enjoy your, you have fun by yourself and when you're coming back at home you know things are bad and uh, you, you you even don't know what to do because things are bad listen to me a good father will always will always you know will always take care and taking care does not mean you know taking care means that you are not selfish I may not get a good amen right there because I know their fathers who are selfish to themselves, they have self-realization of their own goals. That is why we, we many people today, even in the churches, we, you know, even in the churches, we have a lot of orphans in the house of God. Why? Because the orphans, the orphanages are being brought in because fathers are selfish. God has given you Timothy. God has given you, you are, God has given you Timothy. God has given you a Titus in your life. Why don't you nurture that Titus? Why don't you nurture the Timothy that God has given you? Why don't you speak uh, the impartation? Why don't you impact this church? Why don't you impact your sons and daughters for the greater work ahead? Because you know what? You know what, child of God? You know what, my fellow, my fellow man? Listen to me. If you if you become selfish, even spiritually, you will not raise a generation to after you. You will not raise a Joshua generation. You will not, when you are gone, everything is gone. When, oh my God, I don't know who I'm talking to. When you are gone, everything is, is gone. But now God is saying, on this Father's Day, Raise a generation on this Father's Day. Raise a Timothy. Raise a, raise sons and daughters that will really walk in your steps. That will say, when my father is not around, I will be able to do one, two, three. God is raising Joshua. Are you one of them? God is raising people that will say, I want to walk the walk of my father. God is raising, you know, God is raising Elijah that will say, I want to walk in the footstep of my Elijah. That is what the Lord is looking for. If you are an Elijah, please, by the grace of God, don't be selfish. Don't have self-realization of your own goals. Your goal will be, I want to raise a, a, a team of it. I want to raise a generation that will fear the Lord. I want to raise Elisha. And because I want to raise Elisha, I, I want to raise, you know, people that will take over. Because Elisha raised Gehazi. I want to raise people that will uh, take over the mantle. Moses raised Joshua. I want to raise somebody that is fatherhood. Oh, glory to God. Now, a good father gives encouragement. We are in the days whereby fathers don't encourage their sons and daughters. But I come to you in the name of the Lord to ask you by the mercies of God that you need as a father to encourage your sons and daughters. One of the reasons why 
our generation, we are, li we are living in the generation that is crippled. Our generation today is crippled. Why? Because fathers don't want to encourage their sons and daughters. And God is calling us to a place of encouraging our sons and daughters. If you are not encouraging your sons and daughters from where they are, that is why we are raising a people generation. That is why we are raising a, a hip hop generation. People that have very wonderful information, but they don't have the revelation that is given through the information. And so God wants us to have, uh, you know, God wants to, to raise fathers. God is speaking to fathers that will give encouragement. May you receive the encouragement right now. To all my sons and daughters, I speak a word of encouragement to you. May the Almighty God bless you. Those that are in Kenya, those that are in uh, the, the nations of the world, those that are in Denmark, those that are in Sweden, those that are in the entire nations, those that are listening to this voice, may the Almighty God release a spirit uh, of encouragement tonight. May the Lord encourage you. May you receive this anointing from your father today in the name of Jesus. May you receive this anointing that wherever the enemy had put you and they say, the enemy say that you will not go far. I pray that as you listen from these, uh, from these uh, uh, encouraging words, may the almighty God release a word in your spirit that will lift you up. You know, David encouraged himself in the Lord, but you also need a father that will, that will, that will tell you, you will make it, you will survive, you will, you will succeed. Glory to God. Now listen to me, child of God. Let me make this clear. I am talking about fatherhood right now. This can be your biological father, and this can be your spiritual father. Let me make the difference. Your biological father can be a drunkard person. Your biological father can be on drugs 24-7. Listen to me. Even if your biological father is a, you know, is, is a drunk, is, is a drunkard person. Your biological father doesn't have a name in the community. Your biological father doesn't have a name in your, in your community. Even if your biological father has not supported you the way you think he should support you. Or when your biological father speaks something in your life, listen to me. He might be, maybe he's just drunk. He's in the higher, higher spirits. But he can look at you and say, son, daughter, May the Lord bless you. As you go out, may the Lord open your doors. Listen to me. Because of the authority and, and the, the, the authority of fatherhood, the Lord has given to that father. Whatever he has spoken to you, if you had an error in your life, the Lord will rectify the error. Why? Because your father has a voice in your life. Who am I talking to? Your father has a voice in your life. Don't say, my father never helped me. No. Even if he never helped you, that's okay. But the day he says, I bless you. I open your ways. I open your life. I open your financial life. Your financial life. The Lord God Almighty will confirm those words and you will get, will begin to operate in the blessings of God in your life. And so right now, I want to send this word of encouragement to all my sons and daughters. May the Lord lift you up. Those that were so much discouraged in the spirit, may the Lord lift you up. May you receive this word of encouragement tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. A good father knows how to notice encourage and strengthen every manifestation of goodness in the, in the other person. A good father knows how to notice. You know, a good father, when, when you see your daughter, when you see your son, you don't need to be told there's a problem because you have that spirit of encouragement. You have that spirit of fatherhood in you. You will notice, you will encourage, you will strengthen, you will every manifestation of goodness 
If something happens, encourage, you know, encourage, encourage. A father, a good father is encourager. They are there to encourage. I know there are some, I know there are sons and daughters who are listening to me right now. They, 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 even on Facebook, they really want to say, they, they don't want to say anything. But listen to me, ask your father, even if you don't say anything, even if you, even if you don't like, even if you don't comment, I bless you, I encourage you. You know, I lift your spirit. I came to lift your spirit on this special day of fatherhood because I am here as the source of encouragement to your life. Good father celebrates the success of his loved ones. A good father celebrates the success. We are living in the days whereby fathers cannot celebrate the success of, of their sons and daughters. If you're my fellow man, and God has blessed you with, uh, you know, you know, wonderful family, wonderful family. This can be spiritual family. This can be biological, you immediate family. You know, what child of God, I want you to celebrate that family. A good father celebrates the success of his loved ones. Glory to God. When somebody, even if, even if you didn't go to school and your son and your daughter have done very well in the academics, celebrate them. Don't say, ah, no, you know me, I didn't go to school, so there's no need of celebration. Celebrate them because the Lord has brought them where they are. Hallelujah. The good father appreciates their every, the, you know, he appreciates their every effort and express his approval towards them. A good father celebrates and appreciate every effort. If you are a father that you're all the time discouraging, you're all the time discouraging your sons and daughters. If they do something, you discourage. If they do something, you discourage. I'm telling you, you are actually discouraging them to do well. You are discouraging them to succeed in life. And so if you continue doing that, you will, you will, you will not make a difference. You will not bring a mark into their life because you know what? Not everybody wants to be appreciated if you get the appreciation from your, from your you know from your father that makes the difference and so a father is there to appreciate every effort and express his approval towards them you know the word approval is very key because there are things that this generation many people are doing today just because they have not received a father's approval but the day you receive your father's approval on what you're doing, you have the greater blessing in this world. Your father may not give you like, you know, like all the cash that you need. But once your father has put a signature, has approved on some few things in your life, I am telling you where the struggle was, the Lord shall clear the struggle. And so if you are my son and my daughter, and you are struggling with some things in your life right now, I am putting a, 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 an approval over your life. And I pray that let this approval, you know, let this approval cancel anything that enemy had spoken in your life. And I pray for breakthrough. You are, you, you are right there. You are my daughter. And you are waiting for the Lord. You're waiting upon God to provide. You have waited upon the Lord. And you, you know, you see your fellows, your fellow friends are coming and testify what the Lord has done. And you don't know when the door shall open up, you know, to be able to settle down. I want you to know that as I speak these words to your life, my daughters and my sons, the Lord is opening your doors right now. And I decree as your father that with the approval that God has given to, your, to my life may the Lord open doors for your life in the name of Jesus I speak the fatherhood blessing over your life right now in Jesus mighty name if you believe so you can shout hallelujah hallelujah glory to God now just as the word of God say on the same point of approval God says to his son, you are my beloved son. Look at that. You are my beloved son. God says to his son, Jesus, you are my beloved son. In you, now look at those words. In you, I am well pleased. 
That, in other words, God the Father is well pleased by Jesus. He says, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. This was spoken in public by God, the father of Jesus. You know, and Jesus hearing this, those words from his father. Jesus hearing those wonderful words from his father all the time. It was a great blessing. When you hear your father calls you, my beloved son, my beloved daughter, how do you feel? You feel good. You feel nice. And that is why fathers ought to be celebrated today. Glory to God. And not just today, but and for. Let fathers be celebrated because of what they do to your life. Fatherhood is encouraging. Fatherhood is empowering all what is good. They empower you, they encourage you, and they encourage you to do good. They empower you to do good. Glory to God. Fatherhood is designed to utter the words in bracket, my son and my daughter. Fatherhood is designed. Now, we are living in the days whereby when you come to the spiritual matters, Oh my God, we are the generation whereby everybody has become papa to somebody. You meet somebody the first day and they want to identify you as papa. Now listen to me, that is not bad. But for me to call you a son or a daughter, it takes fatherhood in me to present myself to you as your father. For me to call you son and daughter, it is designed. It is not just words. They are not just words, like just verbal words, like words without power. No. Glory to God. We are celebrating fatherhood today. And so, I am giving words of encouragement to fathers and I'm really giving words of encouragement for those that are celebrating their fathers today. You brought flowers, you brought gifts to your fathers, you did very good. But I want you to know what is that you, ce you celebrated today, fatherhood. Fatherhood is authority. The biblical concept of the head also includes the concept of authority. Fatherhood is authority. Jesus said, the authority has been given to me by my father. Listen to that. Look at that word. The authority has been given to me by my father. So in other words, fatherhood is authority. Glory to God. It is authority. It is an authority. You, you know, you receive this authority from your father. Whatever I am doing, I have received the authority from my father because fatherhood is authority. Hallelujah. Now, authority exercised in love expressed through protecting and care over the times is a godly authority. When you have, when you are a father, you exercise the authority in love. You don't exercise the authority threatening to, to beat down, threatening to do what, threatening to chase people out in your life, threatening to do all gymnastics. No, authority means you father this generation, you father the people that God has given you, even if they have done an error in your life. You father them in love. Glory to God. You express that authority by protecting them, by caring over their lives, by caring over the people that God has given you, providing and encouraging that gives the right of this, the right to discipline. 
when you are in authority, you are able to give discipline. And so fathers give provision to encourage and they give the right to discipline, the right to correction. We're in the days whereby this generation, you cannot correct anything. The moment you start talking, people already know what you want to talk about. Now, this is a big error. Fathers are there to correct. Fathers are there to give discipline. All my sons and daughters, I wanted to know that God wants you to walk in discipline. God wants you to be disciplined. God wants you to be disciplined. God wants you to be disciplined. Don't ever say you never heard it from any father telling you what you need to do. You need to walk in discipline because a father provides discipline. A father provides correction. They correct you. Glory. And like I say, they set a clear boundaries. For example, when your father tells you that what you should be doing, do it from this point to this point, at this time to this time, your father is setting boundaries. And so don't argue with your father. Don't start thinking that your father doesn't know what he's telling you. Your father knows exactly what he is telling you. Glory to God. And so God is calling us on this day to understand the responsibility of fatherhood. Because they discipline, they correct, they set clear boundaries. This is what is going to happen in this family. This is the way forward. Because fathers are, fathers are vision bearers. They carry the vision for the family. I know we have wonderful, wonderful ladies out there. They are good mothers right there. They have also visions. But listen, your vision needs to be in connection with the father's vision. If it's not that way, it will one day collapse. And so fathers are there to set clear boundaries in your life. It is shaping the next generation. Fathers, when they are in authority, they're actually standing there to shape the next generation in authority. When your father tells you, I want you to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. It's because your father wants you to be shaped. Your father wants you to be to be a person the community can look at. Your father wants you to be a good father, shaped and well organized. Now, some of us, we were not raised by biological fathers. And by the grace of God, we get to understand the deep secrets in the kingdom of God so that we can help our now generation. Listen to me. If you want to tap into this anointing and you want to see the grace of God work in your life for the next generation, you must honor your father. You must honor the grace that God has given to your life. Honor that grace. Honor the authority that God has given you. Because they go through a lot. Oh, glory to God. They go through a lot just to shape your future. Just to shape your future, I said. I said during the day in one of the one of the one of the quotes I quoted somewhere. I said that. Listen to me. I said that fathers. They cry also. Fathers cry too, and they cry when it is raining. When it is raining, you a father will cry when it is raining. Why? Because. They hide their tears in the rain so that nobody knows that the father cries too. But I must submit to you today, as a father, we cry too. And when, when we cry, we are crying because we want to shape our generation and impact authority, impact authority to the next generation. The Bible says that a good father lives 
Oh my God today. A good father leaves inheritance to his family, to the fourth generation. You don't just you don't just be there and say, I am a father of five, I'm a father of two, I'm a father of one, and you cannot give an account. Uh -huh. <laughs> now listen to me. It, it is an authority that God has given you as a father. You know, fathers are there to shape the next generation in authority. In God's law, respecting the authority starts at home. In God's law, shaping the authority starts at home. Glory to God. I will not stay here for long because I believe that Father's Day has been celebrated differently. But I want you to understand something on fatherhood itself because there are key things the Holy Spirit has already spoken to us. Now listen to me, child of God. I don't know if you have an attitude of a father. God marked the role of a father with great importance. The authority of the father has an influence. The authority of the father has, has an influence to the generation, the influence to the family, the influence to the church, the influence. Now, it is important to know you can be under an, an authority like a pastor, like an apostle, like a prophet, like an evangelist, somebody that is mentoring you. There is a difference between fatherhood and you being under a pastor, you being under a bishop or something close related to that because your father, <clears throat> glory to God, your father, will see you with some mucus on your nose. And he will tell you, my son and my daughter, take this handkerchief and remove those mucus. Why? Because God is your father. But your pastor, you will have to book an appointment to meet your pastor because he's a pastor and he doesn't have the fatherhood. A father will walk with you. And that's why I say the authority has an influence. The authority of the father has an influence in your life to determine, you know, where you will be. And it, it, you, it also determines the intimacy that you will have, you as a person with God. When your father loves God, I'm not saying if your father loves God. When your father loves God, he will bring you closer to God. You will walk close to God because you are following the example of your father. You, in, you, you, you actually, you're doing what? You are following the example of your father and you imitate, I was looking for the word, you imitate what your father is doing. You imitate what your father is doing. Glory to God. My little son imitates what I do. Why? He sees me preach. He sees me love the Lord. He sees me worship the Lord. He sees me do the things that it is pleasing to him. If you come home and you are just taking cigarette like 24-7, taking cigarette all the time, you're taking cigarette, you're taking alcohol, you are teaching your, your son, you are teaching your, your daughter. We have daughters that are spoiled, distracted. They take alcohol and howling. Why? Because they see it from their fathers. Ah, uh, glory to God. The proximity does not come from a sense of duty, 
but out of a sense of yearning, yearning, sincerity, and mutual devotion to each other. Now, a good father gives priesthood in the family. In his family, this was established by God himself. If you are a father, you must lead by example. Lead by example. You know, lead your family in prayer. Lead your family, have a family devotion. Have this great moment together. Glory to God. Why? Because, why? Because it is your responsibility. A good father gives priesthood in his family. This, because this was established by God himself. Now, as a father, the quality of your life affirms the faith in the next generation. As a father, the quality of your life affirms the faith in the next generation. In the next generation, the quality of your faith. As a father, even if you, you know there is the impossibility, I have learned in my life that even if I know things are not working completely, I will never speak impossibility to my family. Why? Because I know one thing. I must impact the quality of my faith. As a father, the quality of my life. When I live a quality life, fathers, we must live a quality life. Because when you live a quality life, it affirms the faith in the next generation. It affirms the faith in the next generation. Hallelujah. So what is the function of a father as a priest? When a father is, you know, standing before God, he is representing his home before God. What is the function of a father as a priest in the family? You are representing when you are a father and you take the lead in the family, you are representing your family to the, to the Lord. You are representing the needs of the family. You don't sell fear. You don't sell fear. You don't sell anxiety. You don't introduce fear. Even if things are hard and every door is closed, I want you to know that as a father, you don't speak the impossibilities. You always come up and say, you guys, listen to me. We may be in this situation today, but I know that God is going to release a blessing to this family because you need to live a quality life. A good father will live a quality life that will affirm, you know, that will affirm the faith in the next generation. Hallelujah. A good father is the one who, who you know, a good father is the one who really sees the destiny of his sons and daughters. He sees the destinies of their sons and daughters. A good father is the one who, you know, sees the destiny. He sees the calling and the anointing of God to his sons and daughters. If you cannot see the destiny, you cannot see the purpose, you cannot see the calling, you cannot see the giftings, you cannot see, you cannot see anything good from your children, from your sons and daughters. Then you are just a man putting on a trouser and calling yourself on the streets a father. You must be able to see something. You must be able to see something. Glory to God. Because when I am seated down, I'm able to see something in my sons and my daughters while I'm seated. Why? Because I have the eye, the, the, my eyes can see. As, an, as, a, as a father, God has given me the anointing to see. 
Sometimes I sit down and I begin to speak in tongues and I'm able to see something spiritually and I speak out when I call you and I call my daughter, my son. This is what the Lord is saying. It confirms and I'm telling you when you respect the anointing that your father has, you will go far. I told somebody the anointing you don't respect will never work for you. Begin today to respect your fathers. Your father might even need something, you know, something that it is out of place completely. You have no idea how you will get that thing. But listen to me. It is your responsibility as a son and daughter to cover the nakedness of your father because the, the, when your father speaks, the anointing will speak to your destiny. The anointing will speak to your calling. The anointing will speak to your vision and to your dreams. Glory to God. A good father is the one who releases prophetic potential to his sons and daughters. And right now as I'm speaking to you, I want to declare prophetic potential to you, my son, to you, my daughter. You are listening to the voice of your father today. May you receive the prophetic potential in your life. Receive the prophetic potential in your life. You, you receive the ability to, to continue with the journey. Receive the ability to continue. May the Lord establish your life. As I speak to you today, may the Lord strengthen your life. As I speak to you today, I prophesy over your life today. As your father, may the mercies of God be renewed in your life. May the Lord rewrite your life again by his mercy. I speak the word of favor over your life. As your father today, may the almighty God take away all the bodies and give you rest and give you all the joy that you need in your life. Receive it right now in the mighty name of the Lord. Because a good father is the one who releases prophetic potential. There are people who are good in business, but just because your father has not spoken to you, the father has not spoken to your business, you cannot, you have not gone far. And if you are my son and my daughter, you're listening to this voice and you're in the business, may the Lord release that potential to you. I speak it to your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I know I have sons and daughters all over. I know I have sons and daughters in Kenya, I have sons and daughters in, a, in, a, in, in, a, you know, in Denmark, I have sons and daughters in Pakistan, I have sons and daughters in India, I have all, all of us sons and daughters all over in US, I have sons and daughters all over. May the Lord God Almighty release the potential that you've been looking for in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, on the interest of time, I may not have time to speak to us the, the characteristics of a good father. Perhaps God will create another time and I will be able to share with us. But I thought it is important to share with us what the Lord has laid in my spirit. Now listen, who is a father? A father is the one who think about what is true. The father will always think about what is true. This means Truthfulness, dependability. A father is the one that will think about truth. Truthfulness, dependability. You can depend on the father, on your father, because he speaks the truth in your life. Glory to God. A good father will speak truth. A father thinks about what is noble. Now, there is a thinking father. A thinking father will think about truth, true things in your life, the truth about your life. Your father will think about it. A good father 
A father, who is a father? A father thinks about what is noble, what, what is honorable, worthy of respect. That's a father. A father will always think how he can be fair and right to others. Thinking noble thoughts will help you to stay away from silly arguments. Thinking noble thoughts will help you to stay away from silly arguments that don't matter in your life. A father will always think about what is just. A father thinks about true, true things. A father thinks about noble things. A father thinks thinking noble thoughts will always will help you to stay away from silly arguments that don't matter in your life. Now listen, a father will always think about what is just. This means pure. This means pure and holy. Pure or holy in the relation to God. Think about a good father or a father will think about what is pure, not things that are impure. This means, you know, your father will not encourage you to do impunity. Your father will not encourage you to go and steal. Your father will not encourage you to sit and you are not doing the right thing. No. Your father will not babysit you and tell you, even if you are doing wrong, you are just doing good. Your father will not tolerate wrong things in your life. Your father will tell you as it is. If you have somebody in your life that tells you the way things are, count yourself a blessed person. Glory to God. If you have somebody that can tell you, my daughter, my son, the things you are doing, it is not the right way. Count yourself a blessed person. But we are living in the days whereby, you know, something happens and instead of being corrected, it is moving from one point to the other. It is all over the social media. It is moving around trend of the day and it is all over. One thing that the father could have stopped and say, okay, by the authority given in my life, I am stopping this trend. But because the father has not taken the authority, it becomes problematic. Now listen to me. I'm about to finish. But I want you to know one thing. That God is interested. So much interested. God is so much interested. By raising a generation. By raising fathers. That will be. Quality fathers, not just fathers, but quality fathers. Fathers that are having the value. Fathers that are not compromised. That is the generation the Lord is looking for. In summary, I will say this, a father will do things that are uh, things that are adorable because when a father do something, it is because he wants sons and daughters to learn from them. As a father, will even go extra mile to serve. A father's fathers are there to serve. And when your father is serving and you admire what your father is doing, please try and do the same thing. Serving others, do what is lovely, caring and pleasing, not doing what is wrong. A father brings peace instead of chaos. If you are a father on this Father's Day, be a father that will bring peace in your own family. Don't bring chaos. 
Don't become problematic in your own generation. Don't become problematic in your own vision, in your own generation, in your own society. Be a peacemaker. Fathers are peacemakers. As we celebrate fathers today, let all fathers be peacemakers in their own generation today. A good father will always do what is admirable. Doing what is commendable. Do what is admirable. Are you a father? Do what is admirable. Are, are you a father? Do what is commendable. Having a good reputation. That one, I will celebrate the Lord for you. A good father is celebrated by the peace they bring in the society. By the peace they bring in the community. By the peace they bring in the nation. By the peace they bring in the family. Now, for those of us that are in Kenya, right now we are in the election mood. My question is, where are fathers? Where are fathers that will stand and say, we are here to protect the peace of our nation. We are here to protect our community. We are here to protect our people, sons and daughters. Glory to God. A good father will always do what is excellent. You are moral excellent. Being an excellent father is, you know, pointing to Christ with life by how you act. How do you act, you as a father? How do you act? Your action. Somebody said action speaks louder than words. A good father will not act rudely a good father will not act rudely to the to the to the people to the children to the you know to the society a good father acts in an excellent manner you may not be very good but my fellow men let us try and do excellent in this day because this day i believe the 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 the, the author of this wonderful day of father's day had a revelation on why he brought this day on board because there was an excellent father somewhere. And my sons and daughters, and all the audience, the people that are listening to this voice, if you have an excellent father, celebrate that father. Get a gift to that father. Celebrate that father in a style. Don't just say, my father is good. He teaches me the things of God. No. You cannot celebrate your father with the empty hand. God has blessed you. God has blessed you in a small or big way. How do you celebrate your father? One of these fine days, I'll come with this message again. How do you celebrate your fathers? How do you celebrate your fathers? Glory to God. Your father is an excellent father. How do you celebrate your father? Because they act good. When they serve you, they act good. They have taken you to school. You, you went to the primary school. You went to secondary school. You went to the university. Now you are living a better life. Now you say, I don't want this old man to come to my house. Listen to me. That is not the way to go. How do you celebrate your fathers? A good father will always do what is praiseworthy. Will always do what is praiseworthy. You praise God with your life. You show this by how you give your time each day and each week to your family. Be a praiseworthy father. Good father, you know, be a praiseworthy father. Be in a place where your, 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 your people, your family will say, we put value in this man. With their fathers who, when they are not at home, even it is not fair. Oh, I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. There are fathers that when they are not at home, it is not fair that they are not there. Because nobody's missing them. No one. No one. No one is missing them. So if you are a good father, you need to be in a place whereby when you are not at home, when you are not at home, you know, they begin to realize something's missing because you 
you have the mark of fatherhood. Mark of fatherhood. Glory to God. And so God is speaking to us. Create time for your, you know, create time for your family. Create time for the people that God has given you. Create time for them. We are living in the days where by even the fathers, you know, if, 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 if I am your father and I'm the president, you have to book an appointment. No, excuse me. Create time for your father. Create time, create time. Let us, fathers, create time for your sons and daughters. That is what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah, glory to God. The disciplined pursuit of the godly fathers find peace and joy, you know, in their lives. Now, for those that are joining right now, what de defines fatherhood is he is the source, he is the provider, and he gives correction, and he shows love. For those that are joining right now, what defines fatherhood? He is the source, he is the provider, he is the he, he gives correction and he shows unconditional love. On the interest of time, I only have three minutes to go, but I want somebody to know that God wants fathers that are focused. Because a good dad is not, you know, it's not just focused on raising God's kids, but also others. When I, you know, I am just somewhere in my fourth floor, but I have sons and daughters that are even above me. They are, you know, they are, they are older than me. And I'm so grateful that I speak to them. I'm so grateful that God has given the grace to speak to them. And when I speak to them, I speak with authority. I create time with, to, to speak to them. Why? Because it is my responsibility to speak to them. So because of time, I don't want to go deeper, but I pray that by the grace of God soon, I'll be coming to share with us on, you know, what I said again, uh, if your father is an excellent father, what do you do to an excellent father? And perhaps if time allowed me to declare all these things to you, uh, you know, I'll be able to come and share with us on the qualities of a good father. Because one of them is, listen to me, the qualities of a good father, just to mention few, the quality of a good father, just to mention few. Now, listen, for those that are joining, the quality of a good father, those that are joining, a good dad, a good father are firm yet gentle. They are firm in their faith, but yet they are gentle. They know how to have fun with their children. They are willing to use, you know, their, 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 their authority well. Glory to God. They're willing to use even their imaginations to make it to be a practical thing. Glory to God. Like now, you know, I keep on talking about something in my spirit. Something is pushing me. I know God is working out something. I know sometimes it sounds like imagination, but a good father will always motivate the, the family. They are willing to be, you know, oh, glory to God. They're willing even, they're willing to be courageous. Good fathers, you know, is they're good leaders in their own family. The quality of a good father. They're good leaders in their own family. They're courageous. They are respectful. They are humble. And they are full of integrity in their life. They're full of integrity in their life. Now, listen to me. As I come out of this broadcast to, to, to today, a good father, according to Ephesians chapter number six, verse number four, a good father, it is the role of a good father not to provoke their children to wrath. If you're a good father, 
I beg you by the masses of God, do not provoke your children to wrath. Bring your children and train them at administering the truth in the word of God. Don't provoke your children, but train them. The Bible says you train a child in the ways, you know, train a child in the ways of the Lord so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. A good father will always train their children. Fathers are to see the possibilities in the families, e.g. happiness, progress, name it, name it, name it, name it. Fathers have to see all this. If you're a father and you are not seeing where you should be the next five years with your family, my friend, you need the grace of God to locate your life. And so as I come out of this broadcast today, I want to celebrate all the fathers again. I want to appreciate the gift that God has given to each one of us today. And I want to ask you, if you have the father figure in your life, both spiritually and biologically, I want you to appreciate that father in your life. Don't take it for granted. There are people you take for granted. When they are taken away from you, you realize that these are great people that you have missed in your life. Now listen to me. Don't miss out on God. Today was just marked on the calendar as the Father's Day. But it is not only today that it ends today. You can have a routine of appreciating your father. If your father is just having one suit, buy your father another suit. Let it be a routine. Your father cannot, you, you know for sure, your father loves meat. Your father loves meat, roasted meat. Why don't you make your father happy? Make your father happy. I lost somebody. Make your father happy. You have all the things you have. You are enjoying the life you're enjoying because of your father. Make your father happy. Your spiritual father prayed for you and things began to work out and you're now living a better life. Remember, maybe that car you have today, the Lord wants you to give that car to your spiritual father. Because he spoke volume to your life. He spoke value to your life. You need to stand and walk with your spiritual father. You need to stand and walk. You need to honor the anointing and the grace that God has given you. And I want to pray. I believe that God has spoken to somebody today. You know, if you're a father, you know your responsibility. If you're a son and a daughter or, or a daughter and you have not done your responsibility to your father, please do so. Please do so. And to my sons and daughters, it is not a demand. It is a way that God will use to bless your life. Don't just listen to this voice and say, we've heard him today. We heard him speak. He spoke. He spoke powerfully. I have spoken powerfully, but what is your responsibility? Don't run away from your father because you need this grace for tomorrow, for your future. You need this grace to keep you alive in the spirit. You need this grace to speak favor and authority over your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you. And I want to bless your name today. I thank you, Father, for the sharing of your word, the wisdom that you've given to uh, me today, Lord, the knowledge and the revelation, the, 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 the wisdom of God. I pray that, Lord, let this word that I've spoken to your people today bring a transformation, oh God. 
I pray to all the fathers today, fathers, you celebrate the Father's Day internationally. I pray that Father God Almighty, may you bless them today in Jesus' name. And I pray that Father, even as we are sons, we are sons of God to fathers. I pray that we'll be able to take our responsibility. We'll be able, Father, to Lord, to take our position and do our part for the glory and honor of your name. I want to thank you and I bless your name. Right now, as I come out of this broadcast today, I celebrate all my father, uh, I celebrate all my sons and daughters, and I speak the Father with a blessing over their life in Jesus' name. And as they and Lord, as we start uh, the, this new week of God, I pray in the name of the Lord that Father, let this week, Lord God Almighty, help us to see the need. And I pray that this week, from Monday to up to Sunday, we will operate under the commanded blessings of, 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 of a father in the mighty name of the Lord. I speak potential and I speak the grace of God. I speak every gift that Lord you've given to my sons and daughters to be lifted again, to come up again in the mighty name of the Lord. I decree that all that listen to this voice today, they are blessed in the mighty name of the Lord. I thank you, Father, and I give you all the glory for all that you've done. I celebrate everyone. I celebrate the fathers again. And I celebrate the sons and daughters for the glory and horn of your name. We thank you, Father, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, you are connected on this broadcast today. You're saying, oh, Daddy, you've spoken to my heart today. You have really spoken to my heart. Now, you can still send your offering. You can still send your, your offering, your skin cell, your, your gift to your father right here. And, you know, fathers are not tired to receive. And so please, if you are sending uh, your blessing to your father, you know, on my Facebook page, there is right there, uh, my PayPal account, you know, you can send your gift to right to, to that PayPal account and the Lord shall bless your life. And those that wants to uh, perhaps send, you know, you know, a gift to me, you know, as your father, you're free to do so. Inbox me, and the Lord shall bless your life. You can send me an email and uh, let me know what God has spoken to you in Jesus' mighty name. And so I'll be able. Those that wants to send the the gift to uh, from Mpesa, we also receive a gift from Mpesa. Mpesa is. Is, is working in the East, you know, in African countries. And so if you, uh, whichever uh, nation you are in, you can send your gift from the Western Western Union. You can send your gift from the Empesa. You can send your gift from, uh, you know, uh, from, what is the other one? From the PayPal and the Lord shall bless your life in Jesus' mighty name. Otherwise, God bless you. God be good. Next week, now listen to this. Next week on Wednesday, we are, coming over on this platform. We're going to have a great moment in the presence of the Lord. I have a great man of God. The Lord is building uh, his own army. The Lord is building his army. Last week, he had a great man of God. Oh, glory to, glory to God. We had a great moment in the presence of God, and we had a wonderful, 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 wonderful man of God speaking to us. This coming week, don't miss out on the Lord. Apostle Robinson Ministry is coming to you on Wednesday. Don't miss out. We have a great man of God from Texas who will be speaking to us this coming Wednesday. Please invite somebody. 8.30 p.m. East African time. It is going to be a great honor to receive the man that God has prepared, Dr. Dr. J. Weasley, all the way from Texas it will be a great blessing. Otherwise, I have to come out of this place, but I have to say this, God bless you, God do good, and I celebrate you all. Happy, happy Father's Day in Jesus' mighty name. We've come to the end of this uh, online service today. May the Almighty God bless you and do you good in Jesus' name. Shalom. Till we meet again.